Good afternoon. We are here to, today with Atanas Georgiev, and hopefully I didn't kill that too badly with uh, Enterprise League. Um, what is Enterprise League? Enterprise League is uh, aiming to be the world's B2B collaboration platform, helping small and medium enterprises and startups um, collaborate with each other more closely uh, through finding clients, establishing partnerships, and learning insights from each other. And, and why do we need another platform? Right? We have LinkedIn, we have other platforms. Um, why do we need another one? So the core of the idea came from a personal issue that my co-founder had while working for uh, small companies. Um, she was looking for a very specific um, type of service for um, uh, doing um, evaluation of a product, so certificate for a product in Germany. Um, it was very difficult to find uh, this specific type of company and just the searching of this um, particular issue brought us to a situation where we thought, how great would it be to have one place where we can search for these types of uh, services that you're looking for? Um, we had a look at the market. Um, what was um, back then the only way to find this was through directories. However, directories have a lot of... Um, old companies which are not active and technically companies don't sign up for directories but they're just plugged in through some data channel and you have a bunch of companies data for them but companies don't even know most of the times that uh, they're um, they're on this directory and when you contact some of these companies um, they don't know that you've contacted them through there or uh, you completely come out of the blue so you are already in a disadvantage and what, you guys uh, i'm sorry go ahead yeah, what we're aiming to do is to have a platform where companies have signed up knowingly that um, other companies can reach out to them for collaboration. And when did you start this? Uh, we started working on the project in 2000, late 2018. We launched it uh, in late 2019. And how many companies are in the platform now? Uh, there are a bit over 100,000 companies at the moment. Okay. And what kind of feedback have you been getting? So depends on the different functionality. Um, we've been getting feedback that uh, there is a lot of ways to search. Uh, sometimes users are even overwhelmed by the amount of information that comes through. So we're working on simplifying this because users want something um, fast and easy. Uh, initially, we went through um, like a very powerful engine, which gives you a lot of information. So that's probably some useful feedback that we got. Um, some great feedback that we had is that um, some of our clients have found exactly what they've been looking for. For example, a software development company uh, for a specific issue. Like some, we're talking something very specific uh, in some small country. It needs to be linked with uh, one of their banks, which has some specific software, th these sorts of things. Um, also finding... Um, new suppliers has, has been a great uh, great thing that companies have established so a bunch of great feedback and we've had also some interesting suggestions on how to increase collaboration more that's the collaboration piece um, was something that we didn't initially anticipate but companies came looking for that because initially we wanted to just give uh, a place to make business uh, but companies actually want more collaboration and we've been uh, pleasantly surprised for that so we're working on uh, even more features in that area and um, I know that you guys are UK based, but how many languages do you support? Uh, we only support uh, English on okay. the platform. Uh, we wanted to avoid having an option where a company, for example, in Germany sends a message to a company in the UK in German, and we have to take care of the whole translation between companies. This is why we said we keep it English um, until like the market says otherwise, really. And despite being in English, how many uh, countries are you currently working with? So we have companies in 93 countries at the moment. Um, some of them are not so, uh, not so clustered with companies, but some of them are uh, very, very popular. We're mostly popular in the UK, US, South Africa, Nigeria, India, um, and some of the um, Eastern Europe regions like Macedonia, Ukraine, Romania, Poland. So a bit spread around. Is this your first startup? Yes. Uh, well, yes and no. First official, we have worked on one um, idea before that, but 
after six to eight months, once we realized, uh, once we made a proper market uh, research, we kind of gave up on the idea. So I would consider it the first vision. Yeah. So it's two of you, you and your business partner? Uh, two of us, the co-founders, and we okay. have 10 people uh, in total in the team. Okay. Um, are you bootstrapped or do you have outside money or do you have equity? Um, so we're completely self-funded. Uh, it's all family uh, funds uh, so far. We're looking to see how it goes and maybe get funding in the future. But so far, we haven't even tried uh, to, to get funding. And as a startup, what has been the biggest challenge for you? Um, I would say uh, one biggest challenge for me personally, since I look very closely after the product has been initially we envisioned and we designed the product to work in a, an ideal scenario. Like we have a ton of users, everyone knows how to use the platform. And this has been probably the biggest mistake that we've ever done. We should have, um, yes, have a vision where we're going but also understand that in the beginning, users will not understand how it works. There won't be as many users. So we, we have to completely revamp our way of thinking in the way and uh, start uh, building step by step. I would say this was probably the biggest challenge since we spent a lot of time without actually getting feedback. And um, when we launched, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a shock for us. Yeah, that's pretty much the, the common route when people start up, do startups, right? They, they sort of ignore the market and try to build something, and then the market tells them what they really should be doing, right? Yeah. Actually, we didn't ignore the market, but the way we looked at it was an um, ideal scenario. So I'm still sure that if we had back then uh, all the companies and everyone knew how to use it, it would have been great. But that's the piece that we were missing. And so what makes the collaboration piece um, so unique? So um, we've been wondering why companies still want to collaborate on our platform, even though there's places like LinkedIn, Facebook groups. I'm personally in some of the, these Facebook groups for entrepreneurs, but I think um, they want to still share knowledge with each other, but on the name of the company, something that they usually do on blogs. I, as a blog, as a company, you usually have a blog and you try to build up um, this trust that you are an expert in something and um, the concept of having another company somewhere else in the world doing exactly the same thing as you're doing or something very similar and being able to in a click learn from their experience has been absolutely mind-blowing for some of our users because um, literally now in Australia someone might be doing the exact same thing that we're doing here in the UK having the exact same problem so why not just get together share this knowledge with each other and just help uh, grow. And I noticed that your um, your product has three tiers. Can you explain that? Yeah, so we have uh, three tiers. The first one is deal zone. Oh, uh, you're asking about the plants or the- I think so, I think. Yeah, okay, so the three plants. Yeah, so first the basic plan. Um, the basic plan is um, something that we allow everyone to kind of get a feel of the product, get a feel of uh, what functionalities you can do publish a deal, uh, visit companies, um, comment on other companies, message them, but all the features are limited to a point. Let's say a limited of five number of deals per month or uh, something similar. And this is the free version, correct? Yeah, the basic free version, okay. forever free, we'll always have that. Then the next step is uh, what we call um, the uh, standard version. So we have, um, we have a bit more um, functionality in terms of um, now you can get uh, featured on our blog because we have uh, also a um, very, um, I would say, distinguished blog at, at this point, uh, sharing with thousands of entrepreneurs about um, different topics, also sharing on our social media and um, getting a bigger limit of all the other functionalities. Um, and then the final one is the premium plan where you can... Um, literally have unlimited access to everything. And we ourselves help you optimize your profile on the platform so that you can target the specific uh, companies that you want to reach you. So what fields you complete where, what kind of products you put, the description for the product, maybe licenses and certificates that you have. If you remember, I mentioned in the beginning, the initial problem was related to this certificate. So we, we've included a specific piece in the platform. You can add what kind of certificates you have, what kind of certificates you work with. Um, yeah, that's in a short, uh, three different tiers of plans. 
And then you have different um, pl uh, sections, right? So some of it's about lead generation, some of it's about collaboration. Can you sort of talk, walk us through that? Yes, yeah, so four main um, sections. The first one, deal zone. This was the very initial idea. We have a platform where you post what you're looking for. Other companies can submit a application. Hey, I'm looking for a, a software development company, which is based in Poland. And Polish software development companies are going to apply to this, say, hey, guys, we're doing this, this, this. This is why you should choose us. You go through these list of uh, applications. You choose which ones to talk to. And in the end, you select uh, the right partner. The same thing if you're looking to sell something or buy some product. Um, same concept, you just choose a buy or a sell deal based on your needs. This is the deal zone. Next one is directory. Simple as the name suggests, search engine based on various criteria, you just, you just find the company that you're looking for. Uh, then we have marketplace. Still needs a lot of work, but the essence is you publish your products here. You can search by products. You can uh, find the products you're potentially interested in. When I'm saying products, I mean also products and services. Um, and then, for example, contact the company. Can I find more information about this service or product I'm interested and start um, the collaboration through this way? I look at it more of a passive way to get leads. When you're posting a deal, it's like an active way. I'm looking actively for something. When you post your offerings, products and services, you're putting out there what you offer and other companies can reach out to you. So you're more like a passive way to attract. That's the marketplace. Um, and then finally, we have what we call Knowledge Hub. Uh, at the moment, it's a simple post, what we expect to be um, something useful for other uh, uh, entrepreneurs and companies on the platform. But we're looking to make it a lot more structured so you have, a, for example, three types of uh, posts in Knowledge Hub. One is a specific tip on a topic, which is linked to a specific category. So different um, specific companies can benefit from this. Then you have a specific uh, insight, what you've, uh, what you're sharing or learned. And then a third thing will be um, kind of repurposing our uh, content in, from the blog, which is highly specific from experts uh, in uh, entrepreneurship into the platform. So we get also the expertise uh, from some companies within the uh, creation of content uh, in Knowledge Hub. And the, what type of companies are attracted? Are you looking at smaller companies, bigger companies? What is the average profile look like? Or... Yeah, so I would say 90% of the companies are less than, uh, have less than 100 employees on the platform. So we're very strongly focused on small to medium companies. This includes also startups because we know they have limited resources to do some of the things that we're trying to help with. For example, if you're a big company, it's no problem to you to pay someone to find you a lead or a, a new supplier, but you have limited resources, then it becomes a lot more difficult. So this is um, our target audience, small and medium companies help them grow, empower them to collaborate with each other and unleash the potential of small companies. And do you leverage any other platforms uh, to support this? Um, what do you mean other platforms? Um, like, are you tied into any other platforms? You know, do you have um, Facebook groups that support this or anything like that, that yeah. sort of across, you know, omni-channel type of approach? At the moment, we don't have uh, this cross um, cross platform collaboration. Okay. We have been using some Facebook groups to try and get feedback on what people think about the idea, but yeah. that's about it. Um, and so, go back to sort of being the startup founder and, and stuff like that. Um, beyond sort of the other challenges that you mentioned, um, how do you, how has it been sort of growing a team and and you know, you started with two founders and now you have a bunch of folks working for you. What's that like? Uh, honestly, I love it. It's been so um, exciting, inspirational. And personally, I in, I've interviewed every candidate that we've had for um, joining our team. I really like meeting new people. It's just the concept of meeting new people, learning something from everyone, trying to get the fit of people who um, whose skills complement each other. I know a specific mindset of one person, specific mindset of another person, different backgrounds, diversity, how that all gets together. We get new ideas. I'm very 
focused on getting everyone in the team to give their own flavor onto the product. I don't want to be the only one saying, oh, this is what we're going to do, or why? Because I don't know the client sets or the data set. So I still want to get a feel from everyone's opinion. Um, it's been a really uh, tough times, uh, tough at times, but in, in general, I really enjoy uh, just growing the team and envisioning where is the next step. Now we have 10 people in the team, but what, what's the next step when we get to 20, to 30, to 50? How will we organize the team? To me, that's... Um, very exciting and i look forward to scaling and just being able to to get more people involved in this uh, ambitions uh, ambitious mission that we have and you launched this pre-covid so how has covid impacted your approach to this and and the business in general um so we were already fully remote so this didn't covid didn't affect us in any way um in any uh, way in that uh, specific area However, in the way the companies um, looked at the platform, um, pre-COVID, we were still growing, but after COVID, when companies started getting locked down, we felt like all these uh, other indirect competitors, like um, uh, big exhibitions or um, networking events, these kind of places shut down. So companies started looking for other ways to find new partners and uh, collaborate with each other. And we saw an exponential growth uh, after COVID in uh, the amount of usage. First of all, we, we did have a uh, good usage before that, but after that, uh, the usage increased a lot um, and new signups, of course. Um, so I would say, apart from some economical um, implications that COVID had in general, for us, it was fairly good. What are the challenges of, of managing a remote team? Um, first of all, communication. Um, communication is by far the biggest uh, threat to a remote team working successfully. We need to make sure we understand each other, even through chat, because sometimes through chat, it can be difficult to convey the full message or the emotion. Uh, we tend to uh, for example, when we get a new joiner in the team, have more often conversations with them to understand the way they think, the way they work. Um, and after that, we can be more kind of open to collaborating also offline the whole time. Um, but yeah, I would say collaboration is by far the biggest challenge. And I've been bitten by that early in my career because I, I worked for big organizations remotely with, uh, with uh, people around the world. So I kind of experience taught me to hedge some of that risk uh, early on in communication. And are your, um, is your workforce um, spread out? Um, are, you, are they in different countries or are they all in the UK? Where is your workforce? Um, we're all spread around three different countries at the moment, uh, the UK, France, and Northern Macedonia. Um, and are there cultural differences between those regions? Um, yes, there are uh, cultural differences, definitely. But I think the fact that everyone is in Europe makes it a little bit easier to manage than, for example, if we had someone in Asia or in the US. And also the time zone makes it uh, a lot easier to, to collaborate as well. And, and what has been, you mentioned that the US is one of your markets. So what has been um, the reception from the US from a European company offering these types of services, are they open to that or how does that go? Um, with actually the first country where we saw uh, mass adoption was the US. And I think part of it is because uh, the entrepreneurs in the US are a bit more open-minded to trying out new things than uh, other cultures. Uh, and we saw it clearly, like we literally ran no ads in the US, no campaign at all. And companies just started signing up. We, we were surprised, to be honest. It, it was in the early days, like maybe three or four weeks into. Um, and the feedback has been quite positive. I, I haven't heard anything related to, oh, this is a company from Europe. Uh, this is why we don't like it or anything like that. Uh, completely the opposite. Great feedback. Yeah, very enthusiastic to try new things, give feedback. Um, yeah. And you also mentioned you have um, clients in Africa. So what is that like as far as you know, a different customer experience and working with them? Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, when we started, um, well, promoting in Africa as well, we saw that companies from South Africa used to sign up on the platform with their company registration number as the company name. And we were obviously shocked, like we, we didn't expect it. 
probably we, we missed some extra market research on South Africa specifically, but um, yeah, it, it was uh, surprising to us. So we scheduled a call with one of the one of the, our users who is in South Africa, and they explained to us that actually uh, companies here tend to use uh, the number instead of a name very often. So that um, was quite an interesting thing. We um, had to kind of do a pivot to say, um, yeah, even later, if you put a number, just um, advise this is like your public name, the name that you want to be uh, known for, not a legal name. That was uh, fairly interesting. Um, now, if when we're expanding, we also launched uh, our uh, partnership model through a golden circle. Uh, and one of our partners is uh, actually based in Africa. So the, the plan, among other things, is to help that um, partnership between the two companies help us um, tailor more our product to different cultures as well. Make sure that uh, companies which are based in Africa can also see uh, the benefit the same way that European culture, uh, European companies see it. We don't want to put any, um, I don't know, unknown um, boundaries for them because obviously uh, it, it will require uh, a heavy understanding of the culture to make sure that we, we don't have any of that. So yeah, this is um, the plan that we're doing right now. And t tell us a little bit on how um, data analytics is, you know, driving how you're developing products and, and moving forward. Yeah, so the, we still have a lot of work to do in data analytics, but the main things that we focus on is user activity. How often do users log in? Which features do they use the most? Uh, and we try to see uh, companies from a specific category, which features do they use the most? Uh, and we see um, a, a very interesting correlation between the category that the company is based in versus the features that they use. For example, um, a company from software development industry is, is more likely to use publishing their offerings than a company who actually um, does uh, import or export. Because of the simple nature, if uh, a company is exporting so many um, products, just listing them all on the platform is tricky for them because it's a bit unknown. Do I post product by product? Do I post group of products? So this is some, uh, something that we've seen with data analytics and we're currently trying to figure out how do we best address this issue? How do we potentially have a different uh, interface for companies who are in this um, category versus companies which are in this category? Uh, that's just one example of uh, learning from data. And one of the challenges these days of being an online business is obviously um, privacy and security. How do you address that? Um, so first, we include high security on our users' accounts, um, two-factor authentication, strong passwords. Uh, all our uh, data is encrypted, uh, held in a in secure database, uh, which is only accessible by our server, the, the usual kind of IT security standards uh, but we're not doing anything like super specific just the standard of uh, what, what each online business should do and um so what are, what are some of the upcoming um milestones or um improvements that you hope to make in the next year or so yeah so probably the biggest improvement will be um completing the uh, new knowledge hub experience which will be a lot more focused, as I mentioned before, to refocus different types of the content there. Um, we're also looking to further improve our search engine optimization to make sure that we also give the recommendations in the future to companies based on what they've searched for, uh, not just uh, the current search and whatever is like most relevant. So use previous searches to enhance this. So a bit of machine learning there. Um, and after that, um, we're aiming to try and more uh, complete the full process of the deal zone. Because at the moment, um, the process that we're kind of covering is, yes, you post a deal. This is what I'm looking for. Companies submit the uh, application, you choose, and that's about it. At this point, we kind of hope and let companies complete the collaboration outside the platform. We're thinking of a way to incorporate everything within Enterprise League. Um, that's a fairly ambitious one because there will be so many different types of collaboration that we'll need to cater for. Um, so, but yeah, I hope to at least start this development in this year. And um, yeah, if things go well, maybe get some 
actual contributions from our users, feedback about it, and help us uh, build the product together with us. And if people are interested in learning more, where can they go? Um, Enterpriseleague.com. Um, okay. All the information is there. Great. Well, we appreciate very much you spending some time with us today and sharing the platform. We wish you the best of luck. Um, and we look forward to great things. Thank you very much. Thank you as well for the time. You're welcome.